Welcome back to cryptography and network security series. In this video, we'll be discussing about the symmetric key distribution using asymmetric encryption. So if you have, if you had watched my previous video, we had discussed about the symmetric encryption. Here we'll be covering all the topics related to asymmetric encryption, right from the simple key distribution, the MIM attack, the confidentiality and authentication and the hybrid scheme. So if you're new to my channel, do check out the CNS playlist. I've tried uploading all the important topics, all the important algorithms here. And subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out any of the updates. So let's get started. So symmetric key distribution using asymmetric encryption. So this method will exchange the secret keys between the two parties using the public key cryptography. So this approach is preferred over the direct communication because a large amount of data in direct communication, uh, there is a threat of attacker accessing the data. So there, in such conditions, we prefer this methodology. So public key crypto systems are computationally expensive and inefficient for encrypting large blocks of data. That's why we are uh, making it, uh, we are using it to securely distribute the secret keys that will be further used for efficient symmetric algorithms. So this was about the introduction part. Here we have a simple key distribution. So in simple key distribution, there are two steps. So used for uh, sending the secret keys or establishing a session key. So in this method, A will generate public private key pair and send their public key to B. A is generating and sending it to B. So let's look into the steps. So first user A will generate a pair of keys PUA and PRA. PUA is the public key and PRA is the private key and he'll send it to B. And along with that, he'll also send the IDA. IDA is the identifier of A. So after this, the, like the, from this step, no, this will allow user B to have the user A's public key, which is further needed to send the send the encrypted message back to A. Now user B will generate and transmit a secret key encrypted with A's public key. So here we have PUA, that is public key of A, and along with that we have a secret key KS, which is generated uh, by the B by user B. So this. KS will be used as a session key. So this step will make sure that only A, who here PUA is specified, no? so only A who, who has the private key PRA will be able to decrypt the message and recover the secret session key KS. So like after these two steps, uh, user A will compute the private, uh, user A will compute the decryption process in order to recover the secret key. Because only A can decrypt the message, only A and B will know the identity of secret key KS. So here user A and B can then use the session key to further um, have the conversation or communicate privately. So this schema is very, uh, this scheme is very simple and it establishes a secret key, but it is vulnerable to man and middle attack. So advantages here are no keys are stored before and after session and it minimizes the risk, but then it is uh, vulnerable to man in middle attack. So here I've just written down PUA is for the public key, IDA is for their identity and decryption process. This has to be done at user A side. The response which is sent back from B to A and here this is being sent from A to B. Right. So here again private key of A and encrypted with the help of public key of A and the secret session key KS. So this was about the simple key distribution. So in, uh, we'll, we'll look into how the man in, man, man in middle attack happens. So here we have the figure for man in middle attack. So man in middle attack allows third party or attacker, attacker here is the dart to intercept uh, communication and compromise the session key without any detection. So initially Alice has a private key PRA and she also has a public key PUA, right? Next, Bob will Bob also has a private key PRB, and Bob has a corresponding public key PUB. Next, Dart has a private key PRD, and a public key PUD. Now the goal is for um, the goal is for A and B to securely uh, share or transmit the secret key, the session key KS. How the attack actually happens? So first, A will send a message to B. So A is sending it's public key, Alice is sending her public key and along with that she's also sending her identity. So this message comprises of PUA and IDA. So Alice was thinking that she has sent a message to Bob, but in middle we have Dart here. So Dart will uh, get the ACE message and instead of sending this ACE message to B, 
he will manipulate it here he will send p u d he will send the public key of himself and along with that he'll send the identity of a so he is just saying that i am a but in in fact he is not a here the public key of d is being sent here so b does not realize that public key that has been uh, received is not of a's here so but it is of d so here d is pretending to be a next next step what happens is b will respond back so b will respond back thinking that he is sending message to alice that is a so b will respond to d by generating a session key ks firstly and uh, and sending it to d along with that encrypted with the public key that that belongs to a which 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 is actually pud here so he thinks that he has encrypted the key and sent it back to alice so only alice will be able to encrypt uh, decrypt this but then the reality here is something different here we have bobs uh, here we have dart's public key here so that sense dart will be able to get this session key or this secret key and uh, he'll be able to decrypt this and use this session key now that dart has got the session key from b further operations will happen that is again from dart it is sent to a right so dart will get the message uh, which has to be sent to a and uh, yeah this part is done now again he has to forward so uh, he he'll forward back the session key and along with that he'll also send the pua that is public key of a assuming telling that this message has directly come from bob but then it was sent by dart in the middle here i hope you are understanding the step so as a result uh, now alice will respond to d thinking that it is b and it will tell that uh, pua e of pua and ks by not showing uh, that pud belongs to d and not b so as a result a will receive the encrypted session key and now believe that she she will be sharing a uh, secret key with d because she is not aware that d has intercepted all the communication and substituted his public key as and when she was trying to contact with the b and a has sent the message to d encrypted with d's public key now d encrypts the session key with prd and uh, he again performs the uh, decryption process and now d has the shared key and can read all the messages which are being shared between a and b now both a and b are sharing their messages right so with uh, a is sharing with uh, d and b is sharing with d so both are not aware so d can now eavesdrop modify inject messages as per his convenience as he desires because he is he, he knows both the uh, session keys session key on this side and session key on this side and he knows that both the keys that each user believes are only shared between themselves and and not with the dart here so the core of this attack is that dart will intercept the message and impersonate to be a to be b here and to be a here so this will cause them to establish shared key with d instead of each other so this is the classic scenario of how man in middle attack works this is very damaging and uh, the third person the dart can gain all the access to the messages not just in this conversation but even in the future upcoming conversations also if the session key is uh, kept same then uh, they are at a threat their data might be lost right so this is what man in middle attack is all about so i have written down all the points here next we have secure key distribution with confidentiality and authentication so here if you check there was a threat of confidentiality uh, alice was not able to alice was not aware of who the who the receiver is she was just thinking uh, bob is on the other side but then it is dart here and confidentiality is also broken here because ks is being shared here to unknown person to the third person here so we come up with this mechanism so a more robust approach which involves using public keys so we'll be making use of public keys this method will ensure that session key is exchanged confidentially with both the parties uh, and both the parties can authenticate with each other so let's look into how this works okay so here we have the figure so the first step is a will send a encrypted message to b so a is sending a encrypted message to b so in this message firstly identifier of a will be there and then a nonce will be there that is n1 so this nonce is a unique random number which is used to identify the transaction and we have pub pub here is the public key of b so only uh, b will be able 
to decrypt this because you are encrypting this entire thing and sending it as a message you so you are making sure that the confidential the sorry you are making sure that the authenticity is maintained here by making sure that only bob will be able to decrypt this even the request message also bob is decrypting here okay so this is sent from a to b now next confidentiality is maintained here next b will respond to a so b will give a response to a which includes a nonce which is encrypted with a's public key so if you see here encryption is happening with public key of a and then here we have nonce here so a new nonce is also generated so b receives the encrypted message and decrypts it decrypt it using the private key prb to recover n1 and id a so b will generate a new nonce here and b will send a message here so that will comprise of n1 the new nonce n2 and all of it encrypted and all of it is encrypted with pu a so this step will make sure that b has received b has only received the message from a and is also providing a fresh challenge to a fresh challenge is n2 here non2 here for a now again a will send back a message a will send a encrypted message to b which will include a non encrypted with b's public key b's public key is used here so what happens here is a will receive the message from b a will decrypt the message using pra and he will recover n1 and n2 after that a will send uh, a message to b which will include n2 n2 is encrypted with b's public key so this step will tell that again authentication is happening here it will assure that uh, uh, assuring b that a has received the message and decrypted the message from b now b on the b side so after that uh, after this step again he'll send so a generates a session key now ks so a sends a message to b containing the session key which is encrypted using the pra that is private key of a and then the result of this is encrypted again with the public key of pub so uh, this entire thing is sent from a to b so this is the final step which will provide both authentication and confidentiality so here only b will be able to decrypt their private key prb and the inner decryption happens using pua which will confirm that message has come from a only so b will now recover the message or b will get the secret key by ks a uh, b will get the uh, b will recover the secret key ks by performing decryption process over this right so if you see this entire scheme ensures both confidentiality and authentication are safeguarded in securing in uh, exchanging the secured key so the uses of nonce here n1 and n2 will prevent relay attacks it will make sure that freshness is maintained for each and every transaction and the final exchange of the session key which is encrypted two times here if you see will again ensure that only a has sent the message and only b can decrypt it further so this was about the public key distribution uh, which uh, along, which um, obeys the confidentiality and authentication aspect so i have written down all the points here next finally we have the hybrid scheme here so hybrid scheme is yet another way to use public key encryption to distribute the secret keys in a hybrid approach which is used in ibm main main frames so this scheme retains the usage of key distribution center so this will make use of kdc that will share the secret uh, that will share a secret master key with the users first and then with this uh, we can further share the session key which is encrypted by the master key so a public key scheme is used to dis dis distribute the master keys so the following rationale is provided for using this three level approach so speaking from the pers performance there are many applications especially transaction oriented applications in which session keys are used regularly so distribution of session keys by public key encryption could degrade overall system performance because of its high computational load of public key encryption and decryption process so when you are dealing with the transaction oriented applications it is very important to safeguard the session key so by making use of the three level hierarchy public key encryption is used uh, only occasionally to update the master key between the user and kdc and then we have backward compatibility that is hybrid scheme is easily overlaid on the existing kdc scheme with minimal disruption or software changes that is it can easily accommodate to the hybrid 
scheme. So the addition of public key layer provides a secure, efficient and means of uh, distributing the master keys. Advantage here, this is an advantage in configuration with the single KDC which serves a widely distributed set of users. So in this video, we have tried uh, understanding the, uh, the symmetric key encryption with asymmetric encryption. So I hope you have understood all the concepts. If you have any doubts, do let me know in the comments. And stay tuned, I'll be uploading the other videos pretty soon. If you have any doubts, do let me know. Thank you.